And good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to McKee Stadium here in West Hartford. Channel 5 and the War Chief Sports Council proud to present West Hartford High School Sports. Today it's soccer as Hall takes on Conard. Hi again, everybody. Pete Lamoureux along with Steve Boyle and our fine crew. Double header action today. And first up, the girls as Conard puts their 6-1 and one record on the line, outscoring their opposition 31-5 to five on the season. Top 10 in the Class LL standings. And they start with Mac Brink in goal and all of her shutouts. Pleased to be working with Steve Boyle. Steve, thanks for being here in this Conard team. Quite a juggernaut in the early going. Yeah, that's an impressive uh, six and one start, and and scoring the amount of goals they have. And you know, if you were look at this before the season, and you were to be able at the high school ranks to be able to predict successes, I'm not sure anybody would have predicted the disparity coming into this particular game with Connor scoring as many as they have and Hall scoring as few as they have. So. But this is Conard Hall, and as we all know, we've been around this long enough to know that anything can happen during this game. So it'll be interesting. I think that first goal is going to make a big difference in terms of momentum today. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of goals for Scott Ferguson's team, they've been hard to come by. 1-4-2 mm -hmm. to start the campaign. And if you look at the uh, schedule that they've had so far, three times they were shut out one nothing to start the season. One of those games, kind of a misnomer because they had a 25-2 shot advantage against Bristol Central. Finally, they started to go in last week. They beat Buckley Weaver, not the strongest of opposition, but they did score six times and maybe a little confidence booster coming into today's game. Yeah, you know, I think it's like a lot of sports where, you know, you see that first one go in and it starts to build a little confidence. You know, shooters in basketball might miss 14 in a row and then all of a sudden they, they can't miss. And there's a momentum thing that happens in soccer that can be really funny that way. So you can absolutely dominate a game, probably unlike any other sport, and still lose. And so to have scored that many, uh, to have taken that many shots and not won, that can be really frustrating. Absolutely. Julia Gannessy among those entering the field right now as the crowd has risen for our national anthem. Very nice rendition of the National Anthem. Beautiful job by the Connor girls. Uh, kudos to them. Absolutely. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank our many fine sponsors, including those at the all-state level. Keating Insurance, MACA, Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reach PC, Counselors at Law, ESPN, College Prep Express, the McConnell Family Law Group, and also at Al, the all-conference uh, team, Allied Printing. Thanks to one and all for your continued patronage of the War Chief Sports Council. And just a reminder, this is just game one of our seven-game fall schedule. We'll have volleyball for you coming up on Friday, October 27th, preceded by the girls' swimming meet October 25th, and then into November. We'll have field hockey on November 1st, unified soccer on the 2nd, and then it all culminates with the big football game right here at McKee Stadium, Hall against Connor. Wanted to invite you, uh, if I haven't already, I, I am remiss if I didn't, the Unified Soccer would love to have you on uh, board for that one. Oh, my goodness, Peter. That, that would be an absolute treat for me. So uh, I haven't seen the date on it, but, but consider me hired if, uh, if I can be a part of that. Uh, 
you know, I've, Tommy Varenzi has been an old friend of mine for a lot of years. I took over the varsity basketball job from him back in, I guess it's uh, 2004 or so. And I know he's been working with that group and developing that program over the years with lots of other great people. So uh, that's that would be a real treat for me to be part of that. So thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Glad to have you. That is uh, Thursday, November 2nd, right here at Connard at uh, 3 o'clock. We'll be in the gymnasium for that one. So some last-minute instructions uh, between the, the coaches and the teams. And if you're Hall, a uh, you decided underdog in this one, what do you think Ferg might be telling his kids going into this one, Steve? Well, look, I, it, this is not the sort of game where they're going to try to outscore them, certainly. I, I think they're probably going to try to play a possession game. They're going to try to uh, take the air out of the ball, so to speak. Uh, given how many goals Connor has scored, you want to have the experience uh, that Hall's been ex – you want to force the experience that Hall's been having onto Connor. Have them take long shots, have them get frustrated with potential misses, and see if you can't get them thinking about forcing things. And then, uh, you know, try to steal a goal when, when you can, and uh, you could win a game 1-0, 2-1 uh, like that. That strategy that you talked about was exactly how the Connard boys beat Hall a year ago when you and I were on the call for that doubleheader. Matchup in net today, Sarah Peschke in goal for Hall. Mackenzie Brink at the other end for Connard. Mackenzie, three shutouts on the campaign, four a year ago. Both netminders today are second-year starters. Lauren Massaro, the uh, coach's daughter, chasing it down and uh, kicking it out of bounds. Then it'll be Hall to put it back in play. As we talked about with the Warriors, three consecutive one nothing losses to start the season. Then they had a couple of ties, Enfield and Farmington, and uh, the Enfield tie against a very, very good team was what Ferg calls so far the, uh, the high point of his season, Steve. Yeah, look, as a coach in a situation like this, you, you've got to look for silver linings because you can, you know, point fingers and, and beat up your team in terms of just, you know, pointing blame and, and, and looking at, at errors. You always have to be able to build on whatever successes you come by. And Ferg is a wonderful coach and a wonderful educator, so I'm sure that that's got to be his, his strategy there. Delaney Connors trying to get it ahead to Alex Toussaint. This is Maddie Huang putting it up in the midfield area as Connor looks to mount the attack. It's a Connor team again that's outscored the opposition 31 to 5 so far. And they come off a 7 1 victory against Hartford Public last Thursday. The seven goals matching a season high. They did it earlier against East Hartford as well back on the 19th of September. Their only blemish so far, Steve, a 2 nothing loss to Glastonbury and no harm, no foul there when you face a team that's gone more than 65 in a row without a setback. Yeah, you know, you know, of all the results you look at, and you, you never want to celebrate losses, but when you're talking about one of the best teams in Connecticut's history, to only suffer a 2 nothing loss means you're, you're being competitive. Uh, you know, you, you want to be careful about over overthinking the total number of goals when you're playing the likes of Hartford Public and Buckley. Not to knock them, but, you know, on a lot of days, you could score as many as you like. So in, in some cases, you're working as hard to keep the score down as you are to put it in the back of the net. So that 2 nothing result is really impressive. It sure is. Mm -hmm. And, again, it's a Glastonbury team, three-plus years without a setback. And that was a match that uh, Conard had to play on the road a week ago today. Battle for it. Down deep was Lauren Massaro, and she does a nice job defensively again. Yeah, one of the things I look for early in games like this is body language, and I think you know right now I'm seeing a little more energy out of Hall to start. Uh, Connor's probably going to have you know a lot more confidence going in that two nothing you know loss. It can be a confidence bo booster. You say to yourself, "Wow, we hung with one of the best teams in the country," and so there could be a letdown. So what I'm gonna look for Connor is is a little bit more energy coming from Coach Massaro to get the, get them going. Some they, they look a little passive at this point. Lexi Gellerman with the ball. Nice pass. This is Rogozenski with a shot right on, and the save is made by Mackenzie Brink. Interesting situation for Brink as the second-year starting goaltender. Her sister is the coach of the JV team. Well, that, that, that always can be interesting, depending on relationships. I, I, will, I, will, I will leave it at that, but uh, it's like doing business with family. But having coached my own children a fair bit, I think when you, when you come to some consensus about what the agreements and expectations are, you make it work. So just like Coach Massaro is with her own child out there. Yeah, exactly. Lauren playing, of course. 
She had her older daughter who uh, went on to the University of New Hampshire to play intramurals, also was uh, on the squad as well. Yes, I know, I've know. i known Carrie for a lot of years. Our own daughters uh, came up playing uh, some rec and travel ball together, and uh, she remains one of my favorite educators in town, and she and Ferg are good friends, so it's always fun to watch the two of them coach together, knowing they have such a great relationship. Terrific coaching matchup here, and then a shot, and it's deflected in front. Good job holding the near side post by Pesky. Two early saves right there. That was uh, quite impressive, Pesky's reaction. That could have gone uh, gone quite badly for Hall at that point. It was a beautiful corner kick uh, right on the foot there, and uh, Hall escaped uh, something that could have could have been a real uh, uh, changer at that point. Pesky again holding that near side post. Back to the coaching uh, situation. You talked about the girls matchup and then you have uh, Zeke and Adam uh, for the boys I mean really really blessed are we in West Hartford to have great coaches on all the sports but soccer in particular I mean just four outstanding head coaches well I think you know when you look at longevity that's one of the things you're looking for right is the, the fact that uh, you know Kerry probably has the least amount of experience of, of the four on mm -hmm. the uh, at the varsity level but she's been coaching in town uh, for for years beyond that simply because she was following Nick Maffa who was at the helm and you know she stayed on his staff for a long time and waited for that opening so uh, you you look for longevity in coaches because they get to develop programs develop philosophy and uh, that makes a big difference in a town like ours Kicked up into the midfield area. No score. 34-20 to play here in the opening half. Camille LaRock, one of the LaRock twins, was trying to start things for Hall. Her sister, Juliette, leading this team in goal scoring. She has three on the season. Battle in the midfield. This is Hannah Weisenberg getting it ahead to Rorgazensky. Slides it ahead. Lexi Gellerman. And it's knocked away nicely by Tusian. Tries to get it ahead and then goes out of bounds. Connard currently ranked ninth in Class L as they've cracked that top ten with the 6-1 uh, and one record. And we'll see in the nightcap, Hall, the boys of Hall, Steve Boyle, second right now in Class L, only behind Newtown. I got to tell you, Coach Segura, year in and year out, seems to uh, figure things out. And uh, Hall boys are obviously off to a tremendous start. And But it should be a really good uh, matchup this afternoon. It'll be a, be a fun one to be able to see. Uh, glad to be a part of it. But, uh, yeah, you know, the, to have two uh, two teams in town, one on the Connard side, one on Hall side, be in the top ten, uh, s speaks volumes about Hall, uh, about uh, West Hartford athletics and West Hartford soccer in particular. Here's Maddie Huang trying to slide it ahead, and her pass intended for Sage Rivero just went too far. And Pesky, the netminder, boots it away back towards the midfield. Yeah, you talk about longevity and consistency. Oh, nice That's Zeke personified in the uh, nightcap. One losing season in 23 years. That's, uh, that's certainly a testament of his success and uh you know what he's been able to do over the years so uh you know each year you you, you know you get a new a new group um you graduate some kids you try to develop the ones that that come forward and in public schools like ours you you get to work with the kids who are in your school it's, uh, it's unlike some other places where you might be able to uh, uh get kids to come to your school where here you you, you deal with who you get sure yeah no recruiting like mm -hmm. at uh, fairfield prep where i was last week where they have Kids on the football team, Steve, to the tune of 23 different towns represented. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, I coached out in Seattle, Washington for um, about five years, and, and I was in a league that was a public school, parochial school, and private school league. And it was, um, it was challenging for the public schools sometimes because the privates and the parochials were taking – from, from kids that would ordinarily be going to their schools. But the sure. league, they made it work, and um, – Sometimes the privates would win. Sometimes the publics would win. Um, but I think Connecticut's a lot different than, than Seattle, Washington, and, and the state in general, the way our system is set up. Sure. So Thanks for joining us here on Channel 5. First of a doubleheader, Pete Lamoureux along with Steve Boyle. Bill Watson in the uh, press box is our PA announcer this afternoon. Many fine years here at Conard High at McKee Stadium. Shot on net again. Saved by Pesky. And she'll boot it 
out near the 35-yard line. You know, if you if you look at the field right there, Pete, I, you know, this game's been played, unfortunately, I would say both coaches would agree, inside the numbers. Um, what I mean is they, they haven't been playing the ball outside very much. Any success that, that I've seen so far has been when either team has taken the ball outside the numbers, uh, down the sidelines, and looking to cross in. But both teams are trying to push it down the gut, and they're not getting much out of that attack. So one of the things I'll look for here is whether or not they can get some outside runs and play the ball a little more wide. Okay, we'll watch for that uh, strategy going forward. Caitlin Seedman checks in along with Jordan Farrell. A couple of substitutions for the Hall Warriors. Camille Larocque checking out for Hall. And again, Steve, I would think if you're Hall being the underdog here, the longer that you can keep this scoreless, I think the better off you are, the more dangerous you become as the game goes further. Oh, absolutely. I, now, um, I can't say that I know when the two goals were scored against Connor with, with, with Glastonbury, but the longer it can go on where you think you have a chance to be able, able to punch one in and hold on, the more confidence the, t the underdog is, is going to gain and the more the, the team that is expected to win is going to start to force things. And so I, I agree. You know, we're a little over 10 minutes in. Um, it, I, I think Hall would deem it a good result to be 0-0 zero, zero at halftime if they could. Probably one of their goals right now if they can hold on that long. One of the games earlier this year involving Connor, they got a one nothing victory against Southington in that game. Southington able to keep the Chieftains at bay until the game winner was scored with six minutes to play in the second half. It's always a, a relief as a coach when you've been dominating a game when you can finally punch that one goal in. Uh, at the freshman and JV level, they won't play any overtime, but here we'll, we would go to two 10-minute overtimes, I believe is the uh, standard rule, mm -hmm. um, uh, to see if we can get a final. Connor on the attack, and the boot, one bounce in, and Pesky making the easy stop. See, except for that corner kick, uh, you know, all the goals from what I can tell are, have been outside the 18-yard line. And, um, you know, it's really hard to get a lot of power on those, especially if you're doing it off of uh, sort of self-made uh, possessions. Not a lot coming from the outside, as we talked about before. And a nice play on the attack. Matty Lopel. Passing for Rivero, and the pass goes a little too far. Talking about Madison Lopel, just a sophomore, very technical, according to Kerry Massaro, our head coach. Four goals on the season, and that's second on the squad. Jillian Haverty pacing the attack with five so far. A lot of impact underclassmen we're going to see in both of these matches here today, Steve, both the girls and the boys, and Maddie Lopel, one of those as a sophomore for Connor. That's going to be a corner kick. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice uh, attack right there by Toussaint. Uh, yes, I, in fact, you just referenced Jordan Farrell going into the game. She's one of, I think, Hall's two freshmen um, mm -hmm. that, uh, on the team. Yeah. Uh, another beautiful corner kick right there. Um, Rorgazensky, the other one who made that nice play defensively on yeah. Toussaint. So Toussaint serves a really nice ball. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the things you say as a coach, defensively or offensively, is you do not want a corner kick to be able to hit the ground. Uh, Hall kids have to be really careful about no handballs. Um, but Toussaint puts it in there real nicely, just out of reach of the goalie. Um, see, that was one where, where Coach Massaro's got to be upset that nobody was on there. It was a perfectly served ball, and there were no Connor girls there to attack it. Toussaint again, and it's knocked away by the Warriors. Coach Ferguson hoping for a deflection call there, but I think the referee got it right. It's going to be a throw-in. They're pulling up, looks like a center, uh, center uh, defender to do the throw-in. So my guess is that she has a powerful throw-in that's going to be just as good as a corner kick. That Typically, if you're going to bring somebody up, that's as, and there we go. So she's gotten it almost to the middle of the box. Yeah, that was Lena Poirietti. Okay. And then off the rebound, she kicks it in on net, and Peschke makes the save. So interesting to see Lena out there, um, you know, obviously known for, uh, for being one of the uh, top basketball players at Connard as well, but she and Delaney Connors are, oh, that's a good through ball. We'll see what can happen here. Uh, looks Ju like one. Juliette LaRock going for it for Hall, but good defensive play by the Chieftains to knock it away. Oh, she plays the ball quickly with one of the um, quick ball in. 
And you were talking about Delaney Connors. She did a nice job defensively to get back that time. Well, that's right. I think what happens sometimes with soccer, if these are kids that aren't necessarily playing year-round, um, they're com tough, competitive, fast athletes. And so you don't necessarily need quite as good a touch to play on the defensive side. But when you're athletic, you, you compete. You're not going to allow the uh, kids to beat you in those cases. So I think you'll see you know, Delaney and, and Lena being uh, quite experienced and overall competitiveness and athleticism uh, holding their own back in the, uh, in the back four there uh, defensively. We'll talk a little bit later on about uh, your excellent venture with the 2401 Sports, but we're seeing a lot of kids out here who play multiple sports. And Carrie Massaro in particular told me that the experience a lot of her kids have with basketball and lacrosse and other sports really translates and really helps well with the different skill sets. Well, you know, look, I, I, let's just see what transpires here. It's a smart decision. She was outside of the 18-yard uh, box, so you can't use your hands when you're outside of the box. So she just cleared it safely uh, and got herself back in net. Yeah, look, when, um, one of the things that I would, would say about, you know, certainly uh, the year-round soccer that can happen and uh, some kids that that's their own only sport is they're really good in tryout situations in terms of showing good moves and being able to do the fancy things that we talk about being able to do like Maradona's and scissor uh, dribbles and, and what have you. But that doesn't always translate well to closing down angles and gaps and knowing passing lanes and really just having a toughness and a competitiveness about you that shows the joy of play. And so it's really nice to see so many multi-sport athletes out here where that translates well in those cases. Connor getting set to put it in play, and there's poor Eddie again with that uh, long throw in of hers. She should have pitched for years for Tommy Varengia's team when he was coaching the softball team with an arm like that. Yeah, Absolutely. Slid ahead. Here's Rivero chasing it down for Connor. Sage, another sophomore, known for a good, hard, accurate shot, but her pass is knocked away by the Warriors. This is Maddie Wang in midfield. Nice pass to Lopel. Tries to slide it ahead, and Pesky comes out. And she'll boot it back the other way for the Warriors. Down to 23 and a half to play here in the opening half. Glad you've joined us. First of our seven-game fall package presented by the War Chief Sports Council here on Channel 5. So one of the things we look for, too, as coaches is are each, each unit, your forwards, your midfielders, and your defensemen, are they working in unison? I've seen a couple times now on both sides where if the Connor girls clear the ball, they just watch as the midfielders and the attackers do their thing, and then Hall will do the same thing. They're just trying to throw through balls. It's, it's a beautiful day. Temperature's perfect for soccer. I think the team that starts to get energy as a full 10 on the field working up together, supporting each other, is probably going to get that first goal. But right now I see back lines standing and watching as midfielders and attackers work in isolation. And that's on both sides of the field right now. A couple of headers exchanged and booted back out to the midfield by the Warriors. It's a good idea by LaRock right there to get it outside. Just a little hard pass and uh, Moeller was not able to control it. Emily Moeller on the field for the first time today. Senior midfielder for Ferg's team. Steve, you were referencing the uh, temperature before. Maybe a slight advantage for Hall, only that they don't have the, the depth and the numbers that Connor does. So if you keep the temperature out of the 80s and 90s and keep it comfortable like today, maybe that's a slight advantage to them. Well, especially it's, it's been a, a remarkable fall weather-wise, temperature-wise certainly. And, you know, as someone who's coached a lot, of, a lot of seasons in the fall, you just never know what you're going to get in New England. You, you could go for weeks with, with rain and cold this time of year. But right. I, would, I would say for the most part it's been incredibly pleasant. And so this has to feel really moderate in, in, in many ways for both sides. It's a beautiful fall afternoon for soccer. But to your point, I think, you know, this is a game of endurance. We're, we're right now we're one quarter of the way through, uh, assuming we don't go to overtime. And the longer um, 
you know, Hall can keep this pace, uh, try to keep it a possession game, limit the number of shots on both sides, uh, the more successful we're going to be. It was interesting. I was just about to say there's been very few foul calls at this point. I would say connor has been a, a slight bit more aggressive, but that's one of the first uh, direct kicks we're going to see at this point. Olivia Pascon of Hall was upended in the midfield. And Matty Van Dyke, stalwart basketball player, puts it in play for Hall. It's really nice to see Maddie out there. You know, this time last year she was still recovering from an ACL injury, so uh, that she had incurred playing soccer when she was a sophomore. So um, it is, uh, it's great to see her back play, playing uh, another one of the sports she's so talented at. Yeah, it really is. It makes a, makes a good story, that's for sure. Here's Tusiat. Allie trying to get a step on the defense, but coming back is Emily Moeller defensively for Hall. And the ball is knocked out of bounds. It's a good little battle there with, with Moeller and Tusiat. Tusiat uh, is a, obviously a really strong player on the outside there, but Moeller was able to slow her down enough to get some defensive help from the backside and another throw in for, uh, for Connert. And trying to chase it down is Delaney Connors. This is the first of two matchups between the two squads. They'll meet again. The rematch at Chalmers Stadium at Hall on Monday, October 30th. And again, that's part of a girls' boy soccer doubleheader on the penultimate day of this month. I love the fact that uh, the, the league and, and Jason and the athletic office, along with the coaches, have agreed to make these as doubleheaders. There were years we went where, you know, we'd get updates uh, from the sidelines about how the boys were doing on the other side of town and vice versa. So I think it's great for the community that we, we do these doubleheaders, and um, it's a really nice opportunity to see both, both groups. And, Steve, to your point, it worked out well with the basketball. We've done a couple of doubleheaders over the years. Now we just got them to do one more thing. When they do the baseball, have them stagger the times for the baseball and the softball for the uh, Mayor's Cup games over at the uh, University of Hartford so we can cover both of them, not well, just one. Well, that's right, because we used to do we did the same thing for boys and girls lacrosse the past couple of years. So it's Right, uh, yeah, that too. Yeah, it, really, it really is neat to be able to, uh, you know, and then you get – you know, when you can, you get the, the, the kids from both teams staying for each other's games or arriving early, uh, earlier than they might otherwise. And I just think it builds the proper camaraderie that we're looking to do in town. Great point. 18-15 time remaining here in the opening half. Substitutions for a hall. Camille LaRock and Haley Berkowitz back into the hall lineup. Jordan Farrell and Matty Mandyke check out of Ferg's lineup. Yeah, Ferg does a good job of uh, keeping fresh legs in there. And, and like we talked about at the onset, um, you know, I, I, it's, it's hard to know if Connor's resting on the, the laurels of hanging in there against Glastonbury. Um, I just see some body language is saying to me they're standing, they're not going after it with the urgency. And what can happen is if you don't get an early one, then all of a sudden at halftime you wake up and you say, oh, my goodness, we should be up 2 or 3 nothing," and you're not, and then you could go down one nothing. Now, that can change in a hurry in soccer, of course, but at this point, you know, we look destined for a really low-scoring game unless Connor's able to pick some things up because Hall is certainly not going to try to win this thing in a shootout. Absolutely. The pace, the tempo, the score certainly going the way of the road team right now. Yeah, it's been uneventful, really, when you think about it, except for that, uh, that early chance off the Tucson corner that uh, Pesky did such a good job of reeling in at, after, with the two saves. Um, so Did a great job on the near side post. Yep. Rogozinski's pass was intercepted. There's a trip in the midfield as Delaney Connors upended by Hannah Weisenberg. Yeah, that's a pretty easy call from the official. Um, not that she meant any malintent, but, you know, tackle from behind. Uh, Delaney went down. It's a, that's an easy call, but it's a, it's a relatively safe foul in terms of where, where the free kick is from. First of two matches this week for the Chieftains. They'll be on the road heading to nice my end of the state as they'll play Maloney of Meriden on Wednesday. 
Ball directed towards the net and knocked away by the Warriors' defense. I've seen some good little one-two touches in, in the center of the field with the Connor girls, but they're really not developing things from the back to the outside. And I think unless they can get some runs that are going to involve some of their defenders and, and get some outside runs, that becomes relatively easy to defend unless you just get a super offensive uh, play on an individual effort. Oh, even the Connor girls had thought that was off of Connor, but uh, apparently it's going to be a Hall throw. I'm sorry, a Connor throw-in right there. Here's a race, and Pesky way out to control it, keeping it away from the on-rushing Alex Tusiat. Talking to Ferg last week, Steve, he said one player that he really wants to get going is senior captain Hannah Weisenberg, big-time scorer for this squad a year ago. This time around, she's hit multiple goal posts. She's missed on a couple of breakaways, and he's just waiting for her to break out, get that first goal, and hopefully ignite the rest of her offensive skills the rest of the season. Yeah, again, I think it's uh, – I'm, I'm constantly making other sports analogies, but for those of us who have, who have ever golfed, there's days you go out and you just feel like – Everything can go in in terms of your putting or the way you're striking the ball, and then all of a sudden everything lips out. Um, and so when you start to hit post, it's amazing how contagious that can be, and you start to think about it. So, but Ferg's right. You just you create opportunities. You keep believing in yourself, just like a shooter would in basketball. You keep shooting, believe that they're going to start to go in, and then you'll get that that groove and that feeling back. So hopefully Hannah's not pressing too much, um, and, and she'll get one soon enough. Haley Berkowitz boots it way downfield. Yeah, that's a beautiful serve in there from the, almost the 40-yard line to go ahead and uh, give, give her team a chance. So it's these counterattacks that, that can become dangerous. So we'll see how Connor handles this one. Um, Tusia. She's been feisty. She's been all over the field today. I do, I do like Toussaint's work rate out there. Uh, you know, she's, she's really stood out to me in terms of her determination and, and, and her grit. Uh, she looks a little fatigued at this point because she is working harder than, than, than a lot of kids out there. And, but, uh, you know, that, that was a good counterattack possibility. But, again, we did not go outside with it. Uh, we being countered at that point and um, weren't able to get anything out of it. Kate Barnett kicks it ahead and out of bounds. Wanted to talk about Kate for a second, Steve. She's been a great story. Mm -hmm. According to Ferg, just a very pleasant surprise. Came into this camp in great shape. Uh, he didn't expect her to uh, make the squad and to be an impact player in terms of her minutes, but uh, she has been, according to Ferg, the biggest and most pleasant surprise so far this year. Well, that's great to hear. You know, I, um, I've gotten to know Kate a little bit this year, and uh, let's see how this develops before we continue that conversation. Weisenberg uh, with the left foot. Cuts it back nicely. And the shot and a save made by Mackenzie Brink. First big chance for Hall. Yeah, it really was. And, I, you know, and that could go back. It's a great individual move by, by Kate. At, um, I'm sorry, by Hannah at that point. Um, but that might have spoken to the fact that she is struggling right now to get one of those goals. I think the angle she had, she might have been better served to pass that along uh, the goal line and had her runner coming on. Um, you know, and that'll come, but that's what happens when you've been struggling a little bit. You want to get that goal, and maybe you, you take your head out of the fact that maybe a, a serve across is going to get a little tap in right there. So you try to force things until you get that first yeah. goal, unfortunately. Yeah. And that's just human nature. Uh, absolutely. And it was a great individual effort. The cutback was beautiful. Uh, she just had a tough angle if she's not going to go near post to try to go far post the way that she did. Uh, it's a good ball by Delaney right there. She knows she can't score from there. So all she did is she tried to lob it in. Maybe you get a Connor girl to run on, tap it in, and, and that could have been Connor's first goal. And she kicked that ball over 40 yards in the air that time. Yeah, and she did it with touch. I mean, that's the thing. She didn't, she didn't hammer it so that it didn't give her runners a chance to run on. But uh, unfortunately, there was a little more watching going on than Connor would have liked. Booted ahead with the left foot by Denisio, one of the captains. Wanted to talk about Denisio. Very rare, according to Ferg, that he'd have a junior as a captain. And that speaks to her leadership for sure. Yeah, you know, I haven't had a chance to talk to Ferg about why that is, but I think... Um, you know, he certainly makes decisions without it being uh, – that would be a big deal for him for him to make that decision. So I'm sure he has good reason. 
Um, I had junior captains my second year um, running the Hall Girls Lacrosse program, and I had good reason for doing it. And we had a lot of success that year and the following year as a result. So I think um, there are times when it makes sense. And she certainly is a terrific player, a great leader. Well, you see her decision-making skill right there, right on cue, is, you know, she could have tried to get cute with that, cut it back, but she saw that there was a 2v2 situation. The safer thing to do there is put the ball out of bounds, get all your defenders back, for, force uh, Connor to make a throw in at this point, and uh, that, that's, that's leadership right there by a junior. And according to Ferg, she cleans up a lot of mistakes in the defensive end by her teammates. Well, I think like the Swabies that we've that were at Hall for years, who who served that role, she she plays a similar style. She's got very good speed. Uh, she's tough, and she recognizes um, when she can do certain things and when she can't. So right there was a perfect example of just clearing the ball and uh, making a good decision. Chantel Swaby, one of those that uh, you referenced, playing Division One at Rutgers. Yeah, and her sister Allison, who was a multi-sport standout as well. Uh, is the captain at Boston College, yeah, and so uh, had a chance to coach both of those girls over the years, and um, you know, amazing how fast it all goes. Get, to get back to Katie Barnett, you know, I think one of the reasons she came in as fit as she did, uh, the word on the street is she's um, working on earning a, uh, a spot at the Coast Guard Academy. That's one of, her, one of her aspirations. Obviously, it's one of the toughest institutions in the country to get into, but we wish Katie the best of luck with that. But there's obviously fitness goals that need to be made to have that considered. So um, I have to assume that had something to do with why she came in in the condition that she did this season after a, a hard-working summer benefits her in a variety of ways that's for sure and i echo your sentiments good luck to her trying to get into the academy she's a wonderful young woman terrific grades and uh it's just uh it's as i said one of the more challenging institutes or colleges or universities in the whole country to get into some would argue one of the most challenging so uh again wish her the best of luck yeah, I would go back to body language. I'm, I'm looking at energy, and right now you have to give it to the Hall girls. Um, they def there's definitely a more competitive vibe from them. Um, they're, they've been the more aggressive team. Um, I, see, I see more watching than I'm sure Coach Massaro would like to see. So it'll be interesting to see what the conversation at halftime is like, uh, how animated it is, but more so how do the kids respond uh, if, there, if it indeed goes to 0-0 zero, zero by halftime. She can give that old Pete Carroll uh, talk from last night. His Seahawks down five at the half, and they end up winning by 30. Okay. Well, Pete Carroll's been known to be animated, if nothing else. I don't know if you've read the book Grit by Angela Duckworth, but he's featured in there uh, oh. for, for his approach to the concept of grit, but also his approach to coaching. So um, that, uh, that's fun. That you, that, that was the, I wasn't aware of that, that, uh, that result. So. I was uh, quite surprised when I saw the result. I went to bed at halftime last okay. night and uh, saw that this morning. Couldn't, okay. couldn't believe it. But that's, that's Pete Carroll, one of the consummate winners in, in all his sports. Eight minutes to play here in the opening half. Still looking for the initial goal of the contest. We remain scoreless. Hall again on the attack. This is Weissenberg. Tries a spin -a move, and her pass is intercepted by the Chieftains and then cleared out of bounds. Knocked away by Lauren Massaro, the coach's daughter. There's a lot of lines on this field, as you can see, because we play field hockey, lacrosse, football, soccer. Uh, we're using the yellow lines in this game. And in the old days, we would talk about wanting to have chalk on, on your boots. And your boots are your cleats, and the chalk would be the sidelines. No one's getting any chalk on their boots today. We're playing way too narrow on both sides. And as a result, we're not getting a lot of good offensive attacks. I know I keep harping on it, but I think both teams really need to uh, do a better job. of e Even in that case right there, the ball was played wide, but Hannah was almost inside the hash marks. And so it's really difficult. It's actually it's made way simpler to defend if you play inside those hash marks. So you want to spread the defense out. It gives more opportunities for runs. So this could, uh, could have been an example right there, but the ball ran loose. Maddie Wang just couldn't control it. And it'll be Hall getting set to put it in play. Haven't heard a lot this first half, Steve, from Jillian Haverty. She's uh, one of the leaders offensively for this Chieftain squad. Five goals, and we've hardly called her name so far. Yeah, I see certainly a name we hear a lot when we're calling lacrosse games. Um, and, uh, you know, she's one, she's one of those athletes, though, that all of a sudden um, she's going to do something special. Uh, it's a good ball served in right there on cue. Uh, is that Kate Schaefer up ahead, who's one of her uh, attacking lacrosse teammates? Uh, just, just a little too quick out there. 
Uh, it's looking like the Hall boys have just arrived for their contest. It's going to start, start at 6 o'clock. Uh, again, nice to see them here early to cheer on the girls for a bit. Absolutely. You talked earlier about the camaraderie factor, and it's in evidence right here. Here's Weissenberg again, tries to slide it ahead. Emily Moeller tried to chase it down right side. And it goes out of bounds. 5.50 to go here in the opening half and the clock running. The World Chief Sports Council would like to thank our many fine sponsors, including those at the captain's level. And they include Hartford Distributors, Franklin Fine Beers, Cork and Bottle, the Babe Ruth Organization, Coastal Tool and Rob Ludkin, and the Conard and Hall PTO. Thanks to one and all for your continued patronage of the War Chief Sports Council to make broadcasts like these possible. You talked about all the lines on the field, Steve, and you talked about field hockey, making that reference. We'll be here for field hockey on Wednesday, November the 1st, all against Conard at uh, 6 o'clock. And just so happens, our seven broadcasts that we're doing in the fall, six of them are at Conard, and then one's in the swimming pool at Aquatic. Well, that's okay, because uh, usually what goes around comes around, and this time next year we'll be back uh, over on the Hall side of town. We're all of four miles or so from each other, so uh, it allows parents from both both groups to be able to join together. And one of the neat things, too, about our town like this, and you know, unlike the Glastonbury's and the Southington's that only have the one large public high school, is most of the parents on both sides grew up friends, uh, going to youth games together and cheering each other on in multiple sports. And um, it, it's always nice to come to these games and revisit with the people you used to share share on the on the sidelines sidelines with. Absolutely, uh, great factor, that's for sure. Again, great effort by Tucson right there to keep that ball alive. She she deserves to have good things happen based on that on that particular effort, um, but unfortunately, it's just another sort of poke in from nearly. 25 yards at that point um now keep in mind people see the 20-yard line and they think is that 20 yards line away from the goal no that would be 30 because you've you've got the 10-yard line you got the end of the end zone as well so right if you can see the yellow box out there that's 18 yards from the goal so the 20-yard line the 20 that you see is another 12 yards from the actual 18-yard box it's almost like figuring out a field goal uh, distance in football exactly add that exactly. add that yep. 10 at the back of the end zone Intercepted in the midfield by Proietti. Slides it ahead. This is Lopel. So I'll just point out right there something I just noticed, and again, I think it speaks to body language, is uh, Hall, Hall earned a ball on the defensive end and served it up and jogged up behind the pass. Connard earned a ball almost immediately, served it up, and stood and watched. And I think that speaks to why Hall is hanging out right now. If we can get a little more energy out of the Connard girls, I think they're going to then feed that energy up the field. They're going to get more of an attacking style. But I think until they get off their heels and they start being a little more aggressive, I think we're going to see a pretty um, uneventful game except for a leak-out goal. And it's going to be that one crucial mistake or one great play that leads to it there's a drive save is made Tusian with the shot and Pesky able to deflect it high above her and then able to corral the rebound and knock it back out again I would say if one kid is standing out on either side in terms of work rate and making things happen it's Tusian and typically good things happen when you work hard so that's an excellent opportunity by Tucson. She actually went out real wide right there and earned that ball. And again, here she goes, trying to make things happen. I think we had a deflection there, so if it goes out, we would have gotten a corner, but Connor maintains possession. Um, Hall covers up nicely. And that was Barnett defensively for Hall to get the ball out of harm's way. You know, we talked a lot about Tucson, her lacrosse coach, Meg Sersosimo, says she's the ultimate role model. What moves? Finally knocked away, and then it's driven over the net high and wide. Meg Sersosimo said, referring to her uh, daughter, her young daughter, she said Alex Tucson is the number one role model that she could possibly have of all the times that she's been coaching. Well, that's so nice to hear because I certainly value M Meg's opinion. If that's what she's saying, then I then I then I trust it. Uh, you know, I know a lot of the multi-sport kids in town, and I 
And I know Alex as an athlete, but I haven't gotten to know her personally. But I got to tell you, I'm enjoying watching her out there and just the way she's going after it. She's clearly a fun, competitive kid, and this matters to her. She's she's playing like this matters to her, and I think on both sides that could be a role model for both teams. Uh, play like it matters. And sure. um, you know, this is Hall Connard. Uh, this is for bragging rights in town and uh, it's always a fun game but I'm not seeing kids play with the energy that you typically see of a Hall Connard match Steve do you think it's more of a case that they're just being tentative or there's just not an energy level out there how would you assess that you know it's, it's hard to know I, I don't see tentative quite frankly I mean I, 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 I haven't seen things that are seem to be the result of nerves um, you know the one thing you can always do is try hard and that that is uh, with so even if you're not the most skilled player, or, you know, and this isn't the most skilled team that Ferg has ever had, and, and, and I would say Kerry would say, say the same thing. I just, given Connor's results to date, I would have expected a much feistier effort, and I'm not sure what that's about, except maybe the fact that they think because they hung with Glastonbury, they were going to take care of Hall easily. So I, I'll be surprised if they don't come out more aggressive in the second half. Weissenberg tried to get it towards goal. And that should do it for the opening half. So 40 minutes in the books here at McKee Stadium at Connard High School. First of our soccer doubleheader. And Steve Boyle, we're scoreless at the half. Yeah, I think, again, if, the, uh, if there were odds makers, that's not necessarily what people would have predicted. Uh, it's certainly what Coach Ferguson had wanted. We talked about it before the game. If they can keep it nil-nil by halftime and shrink the, the length of the game, they're, they're going to have a chance to get away with a with a one nothing two one uh, victory or, or something of the sort. That said, uh, I think the first five or ten minutes of the second half is really going to be uh, telling if if Connor comes out differently than they played in the first half. I would expect that they will. Look forward to that second half, and we'll have all the action for you in ten minutes' time. That's the allotted time for the halftime intermission. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank our many fine sponsors, including those at the varsity level, and they include Low Tide Photography, Dave Newman Photography, Cork and Bottle, Blue Plate, Fast Eddie, West Hartford Youth Basketball, West Hartford Boys Travel Basketball, the Open Arm Christian Ministries, Final Cut Barbershop, Edward Connors Insurance, Stanley and Elaine Phillips, Beth Barry Brown of the William Ravis Agency, West Hartford Girls Lacrosse, and Halls Market. Thanks to one and all for your continued patronage of the War Chief Sports Council. Steve and I will come back with second half action again at the half. Hall nothing, countered nothing. You're watching West Hartford High School Sports as presented by the War Chief Sports Council here on WHC TV Channel 5.
And welcome back, everybody, to Robert J. McKee Stadium here on the campus of Connard High School. Getting set for the start of the second half. No score between the Chieftains and the Hall Warriors. First of our soccer doubleheader. And, Steve, last-minute instructions from both coaches. What would they be telling their kids going into the second half? Well, half times are so important in soccer because, you know, unlike some sports – there's not a lot you can do while the game's going on. So much is done in, anti in in preparation of the actual match. So you really only get the halftime to talk to your whole group about any adjustments you're going to make collectively. Now, you can sub in and out, unlike you can on the higher ranks. But even right there, you're seeing Connor came out a little more aggressively than, th than they were. Neither of the coaches are the, are the sort of the fire and brimstone, you know, yell at you, fire you up that way. But I'm sure they both had pretty uh, – pretty strong messages and I can see even body language from Connor to start with at least a little bit different so uh, you know here's a good chance Delaney in the first half Delaney Connor served in a really nice ball from here and what you'll see is she's not going to try to put it on goal she's going to just try to loft it over that 18 yard line and hopefully some Connor kids can run on conversely Hall's going to try to poke it out up oh, she didn't quite get on it underneath it there and uh, resulted in not much there's Gellerman Slid ahead. Here's Wang down the left side. Watched defensively by Kate Barnett. Wang throws it back in. And it's booted away by the Warriors. I don't see any particular adjustments in terms of a um, lineup. Um, you know, our formation. They both appear to both be doing, um, Connor doing a 4-4-2, four, four, four defenders, four midfielders, and two attackers. Uh, and uh, Hall had a 4-3-3 four, uh, four, three, three in the first half. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll see if there's been any, any adjustment to that. Unofficial shots were 5-1 to one for Connor in the opening half as Kate Schaefer looks to start the attack. Good burst of speed ahead, and it's just knocked out of there. Well, you saw right there why Kate Schaefer is going to be a UConn Husky on the lacrosse team. <clears throat> she committed earlier this year in the start of her junior year. So Kate's a prolific scorer, and you could see her speed right there translate well from lacrosse to soccer. And speaking of her prolific scoring, four goals on the campaign. She, along with Maddie Lopel, tied for second in team honors behind the five that Jillian Haverty has to pace the attack. Kate's worked our camp the past couple summers. She's wonderful with uh, with the folks and uh, uh, wor working working with kids as well. Thanks uh, to Mark Walker who stopped by here. Does a nice job with the War Chief Sports Council. Again, I see you know for the start of this half, we talked about the first five or ten minutes is going to dictate things. Connor certainly put on putting on a little more pressure than than they did the entire first half. Um, so Hall's got to be able to counter that some because, I, you know, if they turn into the one standing around, that will be trouble. Look like Mandyke did a nice job of just safely poking that out, um, sort of like their style was. You know, every time you kick the ball out of bounds and it runs out and you're not hustling with any urgency, that clock keeps ticking. And uh, Hall has no problem with that clock ticking. And it's down to 36 and a half minutes to play in regulation time. Still looking for our game opening goal. Pesky, nice aggressive move. And she boots it into the midfield. Trying to connect there with Weisenberg. Wall boots it ahead, intended for Lexi Gellerman. Looks like Araya there on defense got hit and there was no foul called. Um, so it was a little play on situation, which kind of looked like they may benefit from. Wang, a long pass ahead, but Dionisio on defense for Hall. You could see the frustration there by Wang. She knew she had Kate Schaefer out wide and just did not get her the ball. And, um, again, I would have liked to have seen Kate getting chalk on her boots right there, playing wide. Um, you know, they should not be using the hash marks as, as the out-of-bounds lines. The wider either team can go, the more success they're going to have. Oh, that's a through ball. She appears on sides. And here that's comes Juliette LaRock. With the shot and a save by Mac Brink. 
Juliette Larocque. Hey. Ferg had the uh, lady that he wanted there. Three goals to pace the attack so far this year. Yeah, Juliet's got tremendous speed. Uh, it, it's fun. I, uh, I've been running an old man Sunday morning hoop game for about a decade, and Juliet's dad plays with us sometimes, and I can only imagine his, uh, his reaction right there. He's, he's fun to watch. Uh, so, Juliet, I know um, that's, a good, that's a good effort right there, and uh, the goalie did a nice job of cutting the angle down some. We're going to have a free kick from about 25 yards. So this is a... Uh, 25 yards on the, on, the, on the hash mark. So we're looking at about, uh, from here, about 32 yards from goal. And so at this point, you know, again, too far to go right on goal. Um, so you're going to see them serve it probably far post. You see the Hall girls uh, are going to, they're creating angles to be able to run in at this point and hopefully be able to get a little touch. Uh, they score! <laughs> wow, Haley Berkowitz, the senior, uh, the outside midfielder, drilling one. And well, it's 1-0 in favor of Hall. So I guess <laughs> I, I'm laughing because I had just said she's not going to go on goal from that distance. And certainly the goalie was probably thinking the same thing because all the Hall girls had lined up way away. So I saw the goalie take a quick look looking for runners. And then all of a sudden, I think the reason she didn't get her hands up was she, it was too late before she knew the pace on it. Berkowitz is supposed to serve that in with touch, and, 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 uh, but instead she just poked the heck out of it, and the next thing you know it's upper left. And she was looking back at Ferg, and Ferg is pointing to the far side, and I think Mac mm -hmm. Brent, the goaltender, intercepted that and yeah. thought that the pass was going to go in that direction, and you're right. You're absolutely right. She got fooled by the pace and the velocity of that. Yeah, I mean, that was sometimes that's what happens. The adrenaline is such, and it's a good, clear day. It's crisp out. You poke that ball, and the next thing you know, you got more pace on it than you realize. You know, that's a savable ball. I mean, certainly it, it was a wonderful shot, um, although who's ever doing the post-game interview have to ask, was it intended, or was it just uh, sort of a mishit pass? I'll make that note right now. <laughs> yeah, you know, in typically what can happen in situations like this, because you don't get timeouts in soccer, is... It really, we're going to see a much different paced game right now. I was just thinking to myself that if Hall gets one early, that could be what you don't want to have happen. There's Berkowitz again with another try. Oh. And the shot There's, goes wide. They call that a heat check in basketball, right? You just right. all of a sudden, you just sort of give it another go and see what happens. So Connor and all of a sudden, we're probably going to see a little bit of different body language right now. They have lots of time in this game, 33 minutes. Uh, you know, not that Hall doesn't want to score, but they might have liked to have it with four minutes to go instead of 33 minutes to go. So right. we'll see what happens. Yeah. Haley Bergowitz looking at Division One programs. One of those on uh, her list as well is Assumption. And uh, she will play at the next level, according to Ferg. And didn't hurt her resume or her credentials with uh, that boot right there, that's for sure. Well, you see sometimes when... Uh, you know, I, I think it was in the Patriots game the other day when it was at Carolina, uh, had a 49-yard field goal to end the game. Yeah. But that field goal would have gone 70 yards, right? And so sure. I think similarly right there, that ball was still rising as it went into the net, and she, it was from 32 yards out. So she's striking a ball with that sort of pace. Um, uh, again, was it intentional? I, I, I don't know. In fact, I think if you remember, there was a game we did a couple years ago, uh, you and I, Pete, something similar happened uh, with, with the Connard girls as well. It might have been last year, actually. The throw-in? No, it was, one, it, was a, it was one that I was sure was a cross, yeah. and it just found itself up into the upper left on, oh, the, on, the, on, right. on the same goal out there. And uh, uh, I think it was Priati, actually, who, who had scored that goal for Connor. I think it was last fall. Very similar, and, uh, you know, Connor uh, went away with the win that game. So um, that's a bit of a, you know, Connor came out, I thought, as aggressors, but fluke things happen in soccer, and that that's, could be the goal that uh, could, could be a, a difference maker uh, for Hall season right there if they can ride that momentum. They continue to lead 1-0 with 31-40 to play here in regulation time. It's a great effort by Berkowitz once again. She's really having a good second half, obviously. Ooh, and looked like it could have been a handball right there, but inadvertent. Play on. Kate Araya on the field defensively for the Connor Chieftains, and she'll get set to throw it in play. Uh. 
Yeah, you know, you know, you're doing uh, uh, local television when uh, we call Katya Raya's name out, and and her dad happens to be my chiropractor. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's one of the beautiful things about it. I know I know a lot of folks in in different ways that are out in the field, and, uh, as both as players and and their parents. So it's uh, it's always a treat for me to do these games. So thanks again for having me, Pete. Well, you're the best, Steve. Mm -hmm. You're the only one that. Uh you're the only. The I'm the only. I'm the only one you could get. <laughs> no, no, that's not what I meant. No, you're the. You're the only one we considered for uh, uh, for soccer and lacrosse. Well, so always a treat to have you up here. Well, I love that. Given that that uh, basketball was was actually my primary sport, it's funny. I, I just saw uh, inside the uh, arena there, uh, Bill Moeller. So funny story. Yeah. Emily Moeller is about to check into the game. Number eight. Uh, I. I didn't know this till I met Bill, who lives in town, that I actually played against him in, in college. So Bill played for Harvard while I was playing for Manhattan College. Yeah. And his captain that year was Arnie Duncan. Oh, wow. Yeah, Arnie, who wound up being uh, Obama's uh, head of education right. uh, for eight years and was, uh, you know, obviously a Harvard grad as well and played basketball. So my team was 2-26 and 26 that year. Oh. And, one of, and one, of the, one of the wins was... Against Harvard. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> the, other, the other one, Hol Holy Cross, with George Blaney as the coach. They had beaten us by 36 earlier in the season. And so one of our two wins that year was an upset with them coming back to us. Oh, you got yeah. them the payback. That's yeah. terrific. So, yeah, so Bill, Bill Moeller, Har Harvard basketball player. And I, and I know Emily's mom, uh, Patty, uh, for years as well. W wonderful family. And the George Blaney reference, what an outstanding job he did as Jim Calhoun's right-hand man. Well, yeah, talk about full circle, and now we get Jim Calhoun as a coach in West Hartford, uh, starting Amazing. at the University of St. Joseph soon. Amazing. Yeah. My really good buddy, Jim McKinnon, is the uh, softball coach at St. Joseph's, and, uh, of course, they're all delighted to have the Hall of Fame coach come join their ranks. Well, it's good for it's good for West Hartford and good for University of St. Joseph's on, on many levels, and, you know, for even from a marketing standpoint to know that um, – you know, you're putting in the same way that UConn's now on the map nationally because of women's and men's basketball um, mentioned in the same breath as UVA and UNC and University of Michigan academically right. uh, because of what the program has done. University of St. Joseph's is not well known, and the fact that it just went co-ed is going to be an opportunity to have what really is a beautiful school, a beautiful campus with some niche programs. Um, it'll be an opportunity to, to really, you know, be, it'll be good for our town. No doubt about it. Peschke comes out, able to field it, and boot it back into the midfield. 12 minutes gone by, second half. We had a scoreless first half, and then Berkowitz with the blast for Hall, and the game's only goal so far. Came with 34-32 left on the clock. You're seeing a little fatigue right there. Um, the outside midfielder could have carried that a little bit. She wasn't being challenged, and you saw the body language after she cleared it. Uh, my eyes aren't great. It looks like Antula Kangas out there. Probably could have carried that, that sum. Um, and uh, we're going to play back to the goalie. That was dangerous. Mm. Uh, she's got to recover. Uh, Taking a big chance there. Yeah. Play on the far sideline. Tucson over there, along with Tula Kangas. Seedman back in for the Hall Warriors, replacing Camille Larock. What you're probably going to see from Coach Ferguson at this point with a one nothing lead is a fair amount of one-at-a-time substitutions. Every substitution could take up to 30 seconds, especially if you're subbing on the other side. It's legal to sub as much as you want at the high school level. Um, and certainly he would be doing a lot of subbing uh, if it was tied as well, simply to keep fresh legs. Gallerman's... Gellerman's pass goes too far. And there's Delaney Connors with the ball for the Chieftains. Sometimes you'll see the, um, you know, a defender with a, with a good foot take the goal kicks. You know, at this level, we typically see the goalies taking the goal kicks because you want as many of your field players upfield as possible. But uh, clearly, uh, Coach Massaro is more comfortable having Delaney take them at this point. Oh, player just hit in the face right there. Yeah, Kate Schaefer took a quick one to the face. And, uh, you know, she's tough, but that's one of those things where all of a sudden it gets in your nose some. 
and uh, you know, she's trying to shake it off. She just looked over at her coach. She said she's fine. Um, all indications by watching her body language. Referee just asked her. She immediately responded she's okay. Uh, so that's a good sign. Rogozanski to boot it for the Warriors. Well, that was dangerous right there. Again, what can happen sometimes in those situations is are inadvertent handballs in the box. It was a great serve in there um, you know, from that distance and could have resulted in another quick one uh, for Hall. Lopal did a good job defensively at that time to boot it away. And now back into the midfield. Connor trying to attack. There's Rivero down the right side. She's got Schaefer cutting towards the net. And it is the goaltender, Peschke, coming out. And she boots it back in the other direction. This is what we talked about in the first half, is that what can happen is if you, if, if you don't get that early goal, I'm seeing a lot of passes from Connor and hands going to the head, where they're just, they now they're starting to press a little bit. And they're having, they're having some mistakes. Ooh. Looked like that could have been a goal kick, but the referee, I'm sorry, it could have been a corner kick, but the referees declared it a goal kick. So I think. Yeah, we got three three uh, subs in there for, for Connor. And again, this these are the attacking ones. Um, Kate Schaefer's getting looked at quickly by coach to see if she's got a bloody lip or anything from that ball she took to the face, but she seems okay. Uh, trainer's not, not looking at her, so that's a good indication. But it's also a chance right now for all three of those attacking players for Connard to get some fresh legs for anything they might be able to do uh, to mount that, uh, that comeback that they're going to be looking for. So a good tactical rest by Carey right there. Well, it's an opportunity for coach to say a couple of things to them about strategy as well. So, again, you don't get time out, so that's an opportunity to talk some strategy, talk tactics. That's going to be a, another throw in for Hall. Good aggressiveness oh. on the near sideline by Hannah Weissenberg uh, again. I oh, think the referee missed that one, but uh, he had a much better angle than me. Uh, a little bit of a chess match going on right now between coaches. Coach Ferguson wants to shrink um, this game, make, make it uh, go as quickly as possible, keep that clock running uh, without much possession for Connard. And conversely, Connard's going to try to play with some urgency. Here's an opportunity coming down the left sideline, which we haven't seen much of. Jack, so, Jackie Gilmartin on the attack there, Steve. Yeah, and it was a great closeout by Katie, Katie Burnett right there. You know, we talked about her in the first half being the surprise that Ferg was not counting her in in the preseason as a key contributor. But right there, she stopped down one of Connard's best runs of the day. So here's Priority with one of those throw-ins. Good throw-in towards the net. Ooh. And a whistle on the play. Yeah, look, look from here. Could have been trouble, but the referee saw an aggressive play by the Conard uh, attacker there. You could hear Coach Ferguson yell, not over our heads, not over our heads. And sure enough, it went over the Hall girls' heads. Could have, could have resulted in some trouble there, but uh, the foul was uh, got, got them bailed out. And Roy Gazensky boots it out. Intercepted by Lopel. That's a great little ball right there. Oh, it's a good concept. Again, I think, you know, when connor has been trying to go down the gut a little more than they need to, uh, it seems counterintuitive when you're that close to the goal to go way out wide, but I think they'll be much better served if they can get that as a tactic for themselves. Four of them battle on the far side. Two Seattle. Knocks it out of bounds, and it's going to be Hall to throw it in. Looks like we got uh, Berkowitz coming back in the game, and as much as we called Tusian's number in the first half, we certainly have heard a lot of uh, fr from Berkowitz, who's just checked back in and has the lone goal of the game. Similar work rate. I like that she's running over to the junior Tula Kangas to, to, to give her a high five coming off the, 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 the field. It's one thing I'd like to see more of is just, you know, some urgency and, and camaraderie on both team sides of a sort of a let's go attitude. Let's let's go after this. Um, and uh, Connor's going to need to do that if they're going to climb in with uh, 21 minutes to go in, in the uh, in the game. Knocked away by Hall, put right back in by Connor. This is Lopel trying to make something happen. We got a corner kick coming up. Uh, two <laughs> Well, look. 
looked like they were going to play quickly, and sometimes you do that. But at this point, they've they've sent. Um, Marissa Allen is going to do the uh, the corner, I believe. Okay, number seven. It's a, it's a near perfect ball right there. Uh, just again, coaches don't like to see the ball land inside the 18 like it did right there. That's a good serve right there. Off the crossbar. Oh my. Delaney Connors. She hits those three pointers from downtown in basketball, and she almost connected there from downtown you, West Hartford. That one was almost nothing but net, and you could see it on the strike that that was going to be trouble. Pesky got caught out a little bit in no man's land, was not expecting anybody to punch a shot from that distance. And uh, I tell you what, that talk about a game of inches. That, that could have easily tied the game 1 1 at that point. We always say in hockey that the goaltender's best friend, the goalpost, and the crossbar. And if you're going to win a game like this, Steve, you need breaks like that, right? Oh, absolutely. Sometimes in lacrosse or soccer, we would have some fun days where we, we would play games where, you know, the contest was to hit the post. And then we had some kids who say, Coach, we don't want to do that. It always jinxes us when we do it. We want to pit and post. So, you know, here Connor's playing with some urgency. And, and you know, I, I see them playing quickly, um, but in a good way. I don't feel like they're rushing. Um, and... Things like that are going to happen. So that was a off of a corner kick. Ball gets cleared. Delaney had no intention necessarily of thinking she's going to score from 40 yards out, but she she nearly did on that because because of Connor's aggression and playing with some urgency. We've passed the midway point in half number two. 1940 to go. Headed towards the net. Off the crossbar again. It's headed back and a save by Peschke. What a turn of events right there off the corner kick. Wow. I tell That's you, as close as you can come to scoring. Well, watching that live, it, it was hard to tell if the ball was even alive. Uh, the, the way the Hall girls were standing around, things happened so quickly right there. It was bang, bang that the Hall girls didn't even react. And then all of a sudden, the ball winds up in Pesky's hands, and she's like, look what I found. And it was one of those things where it happened so quickly, there was no chance to even, a, uh, even react. Again, I, I really like Connor's energy right now. They're, they're playing with definite urgency. Hall's going to have to regroup defensively and try to regain control of the pace, slow it down some, um, and, 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 and get back to the style of play they had before, or else Connor's going to punch in the game tire uh, pretty soon. Another corner in front, and it's knocked just away. It's you could third corner, Steve, in the last three minutes. So they yeah. definitely have turned momentum over to their side. And they're getting something out of each one of them. You saw Coach Massaro's hands go up there. It's, it can be so frustrating as a coach when you start to dominate play and, and, you, and you're not, your kids aren't getting rewarded for their efforts. But, you know, with 18 minutes to go, um, you know, if they keep up with, with that level of aggression and those opportunities, Hall's just got to be careful about thinking, oh, we've got this game won. We'll just hold on and we'll keep, the, we'll keep uh, hoping the good luck comes our way because eventually good luck runs out. And, you know, it's sort of like in baseball when you start walking leadoff batters and putting, putting guys on base, eventually runs get scored. And so uh, I think Hall might have used up all their breaks at this point, but we'll see. It's interesting to see Pesky and goal shading her eyes. I mean, it must be a tough sun for her right now, and that's a, an advantage for the home team as well. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think anybody right now who's going to be, uh, you know, we're on a, on a north-south field, and with the sun setting where it is, I think either way, we, we can't see it on the, on the other side, but I think the goalies on, on both sides are going to be dealing with, with that when they've got to look, uh, look west uh, towards the Connor building. Um, but I think you're right. Down there, it seems a little more pronounced uh, because of the angle. Kate Schaefer back in the game for the Chieftains. She had her rest. So now Coach Massaro, Steve, saying, okay, 17 minutes to go. Time to get uh, one of my best players back in there. Yeah, I think that was, a, that, was, that was a wise move. She gave her about eight or nine minutes, so now she's got some fresh legs. She's watched her team almost score a couple. And Kate's a gamer, so if she gets those opportunities, I wouldn't be surprised to see her poke one in at some point. Um, <clears throat> Uh, it, this has been a much more f uh, fun half to watch. You know, folks certainly know that I'm a longtime Hall coach and parent and have worked there, but I love watching uh, uh, good soccer and, and seeing, seeing and knowing what both ki uh, kids from both sides. Just seeing a really fun game out here right now with Connor uh, do, doing their best to, to get that goal back to see if we can bring this thing into overtime, if not win it sooner than that. 
And you're right. I mean, good observation. Certainly a lot more going on in the second half, a lot more dangerous chances, more corner kicks, that's for sure. And you just get the sense that if Connor keeps applying the pressure the same way that they have been, sooner or later they're going to knock in the equalizer. Well, it's, it's, it's starting to feel probably for Kerry Massaro the way Coach Ferguson might have felt against, what was it, Bristol Eastern, when, you know, Connor's certainly dominating play this half. I would you know, I haven't kept track, but I'd imagine they're somewhere 12 or 13 to 1, uh, 2 on goal, right, because we sure. had a couple of tries by, uh, by the Hall girls. Um, but the Berkowitz goal poked in, and so that can happen in soccer. You dominate play and still lose. So um, Hall's just got to uh, keep hanging in there, keep doing what they're doing again, try to slow down play uh, and, and, and see if they can hang on. Fifteen and a half to play as the throw in from Delaney Connors. And knocked away again by the Warriors who have been staunch defensively when they've needed to. Yeah, see that's a just a, that's a tired, frustrated play right there. They're uh, you know, they were doing a good job of because now that just takes seconds off the clock, right? And so you kick the ball out of bounds like that as opposed to still gaining possession, playing the ball out wide. Um, you know, Delaney almost poked one in before, but that's a, that's a rare opportunity. So I think I, that Julie would have liked to have controlled that and, and, and get that one back right now. It just breaks your momentum sometimes when you do things like that. Sure. I've seen a, definitely a more active um, defense on the Conard side, which has made a big difference. There's Schaefer. Schaefer with an opportunity off the swing and miss by Dionisio. We talked about it. She's a battler, and, uh, you know, she's going to try to make things happen. What I was saying, you've, you've, we've called Connor's number a lot more. She's playing left defense, but we've seen her involved in a lot more of the attacking action. In the first half, that core group was standing around a little more than I think Coach Massaro would like. Now the defense is pushing up, and they're the first line of the attack at this point. Weissenberg trying a little give and go in the midfield. Knock back the other way. Dionisio does a nice job right there, keeping that ball in bounds. Um, you know, clock doesn't stop if it goes out, but the more you can keep it in play right there, um, you know, especially gaining, if, if we, Hall could have gained possession, uh, the more it's going to be in their favor. Thir 13 and a half minutes to go. Um, I think Hall should be trying to play a little more of a possession game than the kick and run that they're doing at this point because I, I see them on their heels more than I think if they watch this film afterwards than they'd like to be at this point. Uh, sure. There's, there's a little bit of a... A Katie bar the door mentality that yeah it's a little bit of a rushed mentality right now in terms of just kicking it kicking it forward and then going back on defense there's Tusiat and I love Tusiat's work rate probably a few too many touches right there um, and the fatigue took over some so here we we'll just see how patient Larock can be she's looking for a runner Moeller's making the run so if she can get it to her. Oh. Just under letter with the pass, unfortunately for Hall. She had some room down that right side. She too. sure did. And that's so sometimes counterattacks can be the most dangerous. And uh, so now they got to regroup real quick. Uh, defensively, once again, Moeller made a good run, but she did a good job of recovering and getting, def getting the attackers back in front of her. Connor trying to set it up. Connor's pass, though, intercepted. Weisenberg. Weisenberg. She's been terrific in the second half. Nice, Averty. Twelve minutes to go. Hall continues to nurse. A 1-0 advantage thrown in by Connors and knocked back away by Hall. It's fascinating when I look at both coaches right now, ha having, having been in both situations, it goes nauseatingly slow when you have the 1-0 lead and goes ridiculously fast when you're, when you're down one nothing, So you can see the body language for both coaches um, might look similar, but the feeling they have inside is quite different, quite different. Perspective is everything, isn't uh, it? Absolutely. So here's, a, here's an opportunity here's with a little through ball to LaRock. Is it 
We this got Weisenberg. Weisenberg. Big drive, and it goes just wide. She got a lot on that one. It was just off the right side post. Yeah, you you can see Weisenberg's skill there, right? She's got good good control, good speed. She's going to get a couple minutes sub from from Gellerman. Um, again, fresh legs sl slows down the momentum of Connor when you substitute. Um, you know, sometimes what Weisenberg could do there is you want to get that you want to get that lead, and certainly I think that was a wonderful shot. And from that distance, it's probably worth the try. But you might see with the two nothing lead that she might take that into the corner and let the clock be her friend. Clock uh, is certainly an ally for Hall at this point. It's a good effort there in the midfield by the Connor midfielder. Now they're playing wide, and this is what they want to be doing. So here's Allen. Pass ahead. Knocked out, but Connor will retain possession. Coach Massaro hands it off to Delaney Connors. Running all over the place is Gil Martin. And good defense that time by Seidman. It's a great Priyati. step up by Priyati. She she does such a good job of just doing everything under control. She, it's a, it's a great, you know, not only did she come in, win the ball, but she maintained possession, giving Connor a chance to have this counterattack. She, she didn't just, you know, kick it up, uh, you know, to try to hope something would happen. She recognizes that keeping possession is really important in that case. Yeah, she had a purpose with what she was doing, that's for sure. Absolutely. We're under 10 minutes at this point. So, again, what can happen sometimes is the counter girls start to press a little bit, and it's these counterattacks that can be especially dangerous. Especially if Hall could ever get one more. Well, that's exactly right. Yeah. Booted wide of the net. Pesky comes out the field. That's the danger right there. You know, you're a competitive athlete, and you're hoping for a goal. So as opposed to staying within concept and game plan, uh, Molly – Molly tried to, to give it a go from that distance and really was not set up to be able to poke it in from that far. So I think she'd like to get that one back and maintain some possession. Good D by the Warriors. Kicked ahead into the midfield and stolen back by the Chieftains. There's Lopel. Battle by Denisio. The spacing on the Connor girls isn't great right now. I see, you know, a lot of standing around next to each other as opposed to making overlapping runs, uh, playing the ball backwards and then forwards. So, um, you know, there'll be a lot to be learned by this game if they can come, you know, if they can eke out a victory with a little bit of a comeback here. I'm sure they'd, they'd like to learn the lesson with a W, but uh, Coach will look at this film and I'm sure will help the team make some adjustments as they move forward in a state run. Hall's got to be delighted with how they've played so far and obviously being up one nothing against the number nine team in the state who just so happens to be your crosstown rival. Uh, Coach Ferguson's got to be really happy. So Gellerman should be in no hurry here. That, she did a nice job. Again, a basketball kid who understands value of possession, does a nice job of not just getting rid of it. LaRock tries to pass it ahead. Good job defensively by Proietti. It's an excellent ball by Lena right there. Um, so you're going to see LaRock La taking good poise right there. Oh, it's an excellent serve up to Berkowitz. Again, gaining possession, keeping clock on, and that's a great ball by Berkowitz to LaRock. Make them go the full field, right, Steve? Absolutely. Knock, knock Absol it down as deep as you can. It's, it's neat to see Juliet and Camille at both ends of the field right here, the, the, the twin juniors uh, who I had a chance to coach for four years in basketball in the, in the local travel team. Uh, really fun, good kids, and one playing center defense and the other playing center forward right now. So that's neat to see for the two sisters. Bergazenski for Hall. This is Berkowitz, the lone goal scorer. And she'll just send it down in deep, forcing Proietti to chase. 6.40 to play. In regulation, Hall maintaining a 1-0 advantage as Delaney Connors was just popped in the face yeah, by an errant ball. That's the second such play. So, you know. Opportunity. Player pushed down. Uh, Ferg looking for the call. 
Lexi Gellerman, it looked like was behind the defense that time, Steve, was pushed down from behind and no call. And now Schaefer chasing the other way, along with Denisio. I, we have the referee who, I, who, who appears to have made a call back there. My understanding was that he did blow the whistle, did make a call. It's not, it should not be a play on because it's a PK. So there's never an opportunity. So it, it appears that the referee had made a call. The whistle was not loud enough, and everybody played on. It'll be interesting to see. It was inside the box. That was clear, unless he's indicating the contact started outside the box, and then she tripped in. Uh, Very interesting call to see what transpires here. I believe we have a PK about to happen. Um, With 6.05 to play. So, again, for folks watching, I, we don't have the beauty of instant replay. It, 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 it appears that, the, that, that there was a whistle that folks t were not able to hear. The referee was not demonstrative with his call. Might have thought he was able to do a play on, but there's, there are no play ons right now. Here's Berkowitz again. And she shot it wide. Yeah. Wide. And you can tell by her reaction that she can't believe what she just did. Yeah, that was certainly uh, a quick PK on her part. And again, things happened so quickly right there um, that it was disjointed at best. Um, I haven't seen anything like that before in all the years I've been involved in soccer. The, cl the clock is running, sir. He's, 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 he's asked for the clock to run, but it was. Um, so we're under uh, six minutes. Um, Certainly Berkowitz uh, is having a wonderful game, and as a competitive athlete, she'd like to be able to settle herself and take that one back. But um, given just how incredibly awkward the whole situation was, right. it almost seemed like a fitting result given everything else that went on uh, exactly. in terms of how that transpired. Exactly. I've, I've never seen that much play on go before an actual PK was awarded. Um, not really sure what happened in terms of the lack of instruction there. Rogozinski with a shot, fielded by Brink, and Mac Brink will boot it in the other direction. But just to show you what this Hall defense has done, they're facing a team in Connard that has had so much offensive success this year, and a whistle blown on the near side. I mean, Steve, look at some of the scores. Four against Northwest, six against Platt, seven against East Hartford, six against Avon, seven against Hartford Public. And Hall has kept them off the board to this point. Yeah, you know, uh, we, had a, we had an inadvertent handball there that's going to, again, more than the fact that Hall gets a direct kick from 80 yards away, they can take their time. So they could take 25 seconds sometimes setting things, these things up. They're in absolutely no rush. I think what happened, when, uh, to go back to the scores, certainly some of the teams that Connor has played to date uh, historically haven't had the strongest programs in the world. We talked a lot about that 2-0 uh, contest against Glastonbury yeah. be, being a key one. Um, you know, I think Hall's strength of schedule to date has probably been a little bit stronger, so we're probably seeing that to some extent. Um, it's not to take anything away from the amount of goals that, that Connor has scored up to this point, and we, we both certainly expected Connor to, uh, to, to have a better, a better result than they have so far anyway. Um, but those numbers could be a little bit misleading because of, because of the high volume they got against some weaker teams. Sure. Down to 345 to play in regulation time. Hall one, Connor no score. Berkowitz. Getting the only goal, five and a half minutes in to play here in the second half. The boys game to follow here on Channel 5. Again, Maddie Mandyke checking in. You see with goal kicks, there's no sense of urgency on Hall's part to take one. Obviously, if they were down one nothing, that ball would have been served 15 seconds ago into play. But um, Connor's at the mercy of... What is a fair tactic, quite frankly? Um, you know, they'd be doing the same thing if the results were reversed. Referees, though, can help speed things up a little bit. They can give warnings if they don't feel like uh, it's within the efficacy of the rules and the game. And so sometimes you'll see referees blow uh, pull out a yellow card. I don't sense that's going on because I've seen it just be so egregious. It becomes really frustrating as an opposing coach, and referees get that. But uh, 
Is that Paul, usually after what about 25 30 seconds yeah, Steve? It really, I mean we it just really saw depends. 15 there. Yeah, yeah, you know part of that quite frankly was the ball girls weren't in a, in a rush to get the ball to the to the goalie. Maddie was looking for either side to serve her a ball, the one had gone out, so it was relatively fair um, in terms of how long that took. Shot goes wide. But they'll get the corner kick. And it'll be Alex Tusiant from the far flag with 215 to go. These are gut-wrenching for, uh, for coaches at this point, given the outcome so far. They were looking for Schaefer. Good block at the defense by Hall. Rogozinski got in the way of that last shot, and it's booted back to the midfield where Proetti chases. Wow, Proetti does such a nice job of maintaining possession. She's running in the opposite direction, cuts the ball back, and not only does she cut it back, she cuts it to the feet of one of her defenders. Very, very impressed with her skills today. There's Tusiat, far side. Oh, and as we expected, you know, Coach Ferguson is, is subbing at this point. Again, it's going to take off a few more seconds. Uh, this would be a rule change. I'd love to see change, actually, uh, you know, at the high school level. Referees allow the ball to come and play even before the substitute player came off, which typically you would never allow. But the referees understand the urgency, and, and uh, so they allowed um, the play to go ahead because Weisenberg coming off wasn't impacting what was going on. We're coming up on a, just about a minute to play, so uh, Connor may have just one last chance to uh, make something magical happen to tie this game and put it into overtime. One nothing Hall. Exactly a minute to play. Intercepted by Rogozinski. And she just slides it ahead, making Connors chase back in her own territory. It's going to be put in from the near sideline by the Warriors. And again, they're going to take their sweet time here. Absolutely. There's, there's no sense to rush. You're going to bring up a defender uh, to take the throw in. Uh, the ideal play for Hall would be to get it into the corner and see if you can't get um, Hall to kick it out. So referee gave that one. It was a 50-50 ball. He wasn't sure. He said, all right, we'll give it a counter. Give him one more try. In the midfield, here's Lopel. Drives it ahead. Schaefer trying to chase it down for Connor. Uh, you and love can't Sh get there in time. That, that should probably do it. Schaefer's speed was incredible there, but there's no reason for Hall even to serve this one back in with 10 seconds to go. So it appears they're going to get a Hall victory here at Connor today, Pete. The upset is going to happen, Steve. And there it is. And the Hall Warriors out onto the field to celebrate a 1-0 victory over Connor. Amazing performance by the Hall Warriors today. Yeah, it really was. I, you you got to give. Uh, they've they've had a, they've had a tough season so far with some results they did not expect. Uh, we talked about at the start their record wasn't anything coach would have thought about after six or seven games. So this is the kind of game that can bring you momentum into practice the next time. You know, and for, and for Connor, they're, they're, they're having a good season. This, cannot, this is not going to be the mark of their season. The mark is going to be how they respond to this loss. Sure. Great job as always, Steve. We'll see you for the boys game. Great. Thanks for having me, Pete. Always good to be here with you. And uh, we'll get that post-game interview as well. We're going to talk to Ferg, and we're going to talk to one or two of the players as well. That's all coming up. But, again, as the players slap hands and congratulate one another, the final score here at McKee Stadium, Hall 1, Connard, no score. Back with more after this on Channel 5 is presented by the War Chief Sports Council.
Ferg, congratulations on the win. What a heart, what a, uh, just a heart-wrenching, gut-wrenching win. You guys pulled it out. It was really close. I was saying to you before, I think we were tremendously lucky because they had hit the post, the crossbar, lots of chances. Uh, but, I mean, we scored a really nice goal. We worked really hard. So, you know, we'll take it. Pesky with a couple of unbelievable saves early on in the first half on the near side post down here, two in a row, bing, bang. She made the stops, and that really could have changed the momentum of the game. She's been great for us all the time. Like, she's very sure-handed. Um, she gets to more balls than people anticipate. She comes out of her box really well. She's been a real, real force for us this year. On the goal, five and a half minutes into the second half, breaking the scoreless tie. Were you trying to direct it towards the far post, and then she just got all of it, and, and it goes in the back of the net? Haley will tell you, uh, she actually asked, which was really nice. She said, in the box or on net, and I'd like to say that I told her, but I said, you do what you think you want to do, and so you trust her to do the right thing, and she put it up her 90. Like, I can't take credit for that. It was a beautiful strike, but she really was just, we had a great angle looking at it. I'm glad she put it on net. She made a smart decision. Not the best of starts for the team this season, but a win like this, now back-to-back -back victories, this could really turn things around for you. Well, we've been in every game. I mean, if you look at our record, it's not impressive, but every game we've lost, it's been by a goal, and we've tied a lot of games. And we've talked about if we can just kind of change that a little bit, we won our first one by one. So we're hoping that's going to move us along. The girls have been great, uh, fantastic effort. I love coaching them. So, you know, I'm hoping that's going to be a trend now. Well, congratulations on the win today, and thanks for all your help preparing for the game. It was uh, terrific. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, Scott Ferguson joining us. Now it's your turn. What a goal that was. Just a tremendous. That, that's one of the furthest goals I've ever seen. Is that the furthest one you've ever scored? Probably, yeah. I don't normally get to score. I usually play defense, so it's a nice little change up that I got to take that shot, and it was really nice. Maybe Frank Robinson can have you come kick for the football team with a shot like that. I don't know. Maybe. I love Coach Rob. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on the one. What does it mean to beat your crosstown rivals like that? It was really exciting, and just like that feeling of euphoria that we all had, and I just – I love this team so much, so I'm so glad that I helped them, uh, that they helped me and that I could help them, you know, clutch this win. Well, I hope you have many more the rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you. Our goaltender was sensational today. Two big stops in the first half. That really changed the whole momentum of the game. If they score there, they have a one nothing lead. They play a whole lot differently when they have the lead like that. So big stops for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it was it was essential because if they had gotten the momentum, then we might not have scored again, or it would have been a closer game. And it's all about momentum in soccer. Boy, they came at you really hard yeah. the last 10 or 12 minutes. How nerve-wracking is it? How nervous do you get down the stretch in a game like that? Um, well, I don't necessarily get nervous like during the game, but like during halftime and before the game, I, I tend to get nervous. But like once I start, I'm usually fine. They had three corner kicks in a row from the 22-minute mark to the 19-minute mark. Again, you made an unbelievably brilliant save on the near side post, and that was a bing-bang situation where they had two opportunities back-to-back. -back. Then after that, your defense kind of settled down and, and played well in front of you. Right, right. Um, yeah, we started to get rid of the ball and work together more as a team, and it was, it was really good for us. Back-to-back -back wins now. You're 2-4-2. Two, two. Can this team still make the tournament? Oh, yes, definitely. I definitely think so. We have some difficult teams coming up, um, Glastonbury, but I think if anybody's going to beat their streak, it's going to be us. And I think that this forward momentum is really good, and this game was an essential win. Great win today. Great job in that, and get many more the rest of the year. Thank you. Hall winning today by the count of 1-0 in the girls' game. Thanks to all involved, including Brendan upstairs and Frankie, our new camera operator. And to, to all involved, including the War Chief Sports Council, Paul and Dennis, and uh, everybody that does such a fine job from there. Pete Lamoureux for Steve Boyle saying thanks for watching. The boys' game is next. Final score in the girls' contest. Hall won. Connor, no score. Thanks for watching on WHC-TV Channel 5 is presented by the War Chief Sports Council. So long.